I am in Melbourne, Australia, with my good friend, John Cook, from the University of Melbourne. And John and I are going to talk about consensus. Hi, John. How are you doing? I'm good. Good. Uh, a few things everyone at home should know about John before we proceed is uh, that he is the founder of the website Skeptical Science, an online source that helps. Honestly, it's one of the best climate change uh, communication sites online. Uh, and he is the creator of Cranky Uncle, a game, a book, a uh, website that teaches players to identify and not fall for the characteristics of uh, science denial. And finally, he is the main author of the 2013 97% consensus on climate change. So that's what we're going to talk about today, because I have consensus questions. So first, I was hoping you could um, explain where that study came from, why you did the study, and um, why it became such a big deal. The first consensus study was published about a decade earlier. Um, in 2004, Naomi Rezquez published a study looking at papers about climate change, and she couldn't find any papers that um, disagreed with human-caused global warming. So we were about 10 years on, and we thought, let's see if we find the same picture that Naomi did. So we looked at uh, 12,000 papers about global warming and global climate change, found 4,000 papers stating a position on whether humans were causing global warming or not, and among those 4,000 papers, 97% agreed that humans were causing global warming. We published the paper in the journal Environmental Research Letters. And the day after, President Obama tweeted about it. And that really is the reason why it, the paper got so much attention. What I just heard there was that there were papers before you. Uh, that had found a consensus on climate change. And I've heard you talk about when you submitted your study to the reviewers that they weren't uh, convinced that there needed to be another study. So if you could just talk about that. Yeah, so we we submitted our paper, and like any paper submitted to a scientific journal, um, experts in the field peer-reviewed it, they read through and, and sent back their, their feedback, their, their comments. And one of the comments was, why are you even talking about this? Like, there was the Oresco study in 2004. There were other studies also finding 97% consensus before us in 2009, in 2010. And so they were asking, well, what are you, what are you telling us that's new? You don't publish scientific research unless it's adding to our body of knowledge. And we were really just replicating what earlier studies had already found. And, that, and that's a good, that's good feedback. It forced us to go deeper into our data and, and um, find uh, richer, uh, more nuanced results in our data just to, to flesh out our understanding of consensus. Why do you think that study so shocked the public then? So while the scientific community were well aware that there was overwhelming scientific agreement that humans are causing global warming, the public weren't. Um, at the same time that there was 97% consensus, if you surveyed the public, and in fact, I was running surveys where I was asking the general public, what percentage of climate scientists do you think agree that humans are causing global warming? Early in my PhD, 2011, 2012, the average answer was about 57%. So 57 is public perception, 97 is the actual consensus. The public thought it was still a 50-50 debate. And why do you think that was? Uh, the, the two main reasons why the public, three reasons, three contributors, uh, to why the public were not aware of the 97% consensus. One, uh, just not like a lack of awareness. They just hadn't heard it. Uh, the second reason was misinformation confusing the public, and that can take many different forms. And the third was political ideology. What I found in my data was People who were on the political left had a much higher perception of consensus than people on the right. So uh, there's a strong slope to the line. But even people on the political left, even though they had higher perceived consensus, it was still like no higher than 70%. So there was still a gap. Um, so ideology is part of the answer, but there were other factors as well. Uh John Oliver also did a segment on your study, right? Uh, and I love it, and I still use it in my class, too, because anecdotally, by the way, I ask my students what they think the consensus is on climate change 
and almost none of them are aware. They think it's quite low. Um, but the few who do mention John Oliver. So can you explain what John Oliver did and why? So John Oliver did a, um, a segment about climate change. And really what he was getting at in there was a critique of how the media cover climate change. So I talked about different forms of misinformation casting doubt on the consensus. One of those forms is false balance or when the media portray an issue like climate change where there is consensus as a 50-50 debate. When the public see a climate scientist debating with a contrarian, they just see it 50-50. And so they assume that there's 50-50 agreement amongst the climate scientists community when there's actually 97%. Um, so John Oliver was saying this is a misleading way to portray an issue like climate change. A more appropriate way would be actually have 97 climate scientists and three contrarians. And so he literally did that and crowded a hundred people into a room. It was very effective. Yeah. So can you then tell me what a consensus is? Uh, generally, consensus is when there is strong scientific understanding about a question like human caused global warming. When we've collected enough evidence and the scientific community all agree that the scientific evidence is pointing to a single consistent conclusion. Uh, the reason why it's important is because of public perceptions and how the public understands science. The, the average person uh, and even scientists don't have time to read every scientific paper or any scientific papers. Uh, and so they rely on expert opinion. Uh, and, and so uh, it's, it's a mental shortcut or, or heuristic uh, is what do the experts think? And 97% consensus is a very short um simple way to communicate here is the expert opinion about this particular scientific question. What I've heard so far then is that consensus is both a consensus of experts and a consensus of evidence, and those two go together, uh, and that there is a strong scientific consensus on human-caused climate change, and that it's a tactic of science denial uh, to cast doubt on the existence of a consensus. Uh, where this is coming from for me, the reason I wanted to ask you these questions is because I spent a lot of time communicating science online and I see this range of um, reactions when I try and address this issue on, well, science doesn't work by consensus. It's not a show of hands. It's not a vote or um, there is no consensus or any number of those things. So if you could just um, go in maybe a bit more about um, where that comes from and why it's so effective. The interesting trajectory of the public debate about consensus on climate change is it began with uh, climate deniers arguing there is no consensus using a variety of techniques. Um, and then when myself and other people showed actually there's 97% consensus, then they shifted the goalpost to or science isn't done by consensus. So it's kind of hypocritical or inconsistent because they were appealing to consensus or the lack thereof until that argument failed. And then they shifted to, uh, well, why are you talking about consensus? We were just debugging that mm. original argument. As for the, the argument that science isn't done by consensus, that's just not true. Like science, science is done by a scientific community, people who assess the evidence and then come to a conclusion uh, and 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 scientific consensus is that expert agreement um, based on the evidence so the question is is consensus a consensus of evidence or a consensus of scientists that's really a false dichotomy because it's both and and the two are inextricably linked and what i found um i'd love to hear your opinion on this so um Climate change seems to be one of those rare uh, aspects, areas of science where so many consensus studies have been done. I tell my students that if they want the best available conclusions, knowledge at any given time to look for the consensus. But what I found then was that it's really hard to find a consensus. It's buried in like um, um, maybe professional associations or sometimes there's cons consensus statements or positions. But this particular area has a lot of research to document the existence of the conspiracy or the, the existence of a consensus. Uh, 
Which is why then, like, attacking the consensus, I, I guess I'm having trouble understanding why in this one area there is such a strong consensus and a misunderstanding that there is a consensus. Uh, I think that, um, well, firstly, consensus is used in a whole range of scientific topics. But as you say, it's a lot more prominent in climate change. And I would think that this is probably because the misinformation campaign in climate change is that much more prominent and ubiquitous. Mm. Like um, hundreds of millions of dollars have been spent um, going to organizations that promote climate misinformation. Uh, it's probably the most well-funded misinformation campaign in human history. And a lot of it has been targeting consensus. So we really had to push back against that misinformation by quantifying the consensus. And, and I think it's a good thing that we've done it in lots of different ways, using multiple independent studies, using different techniques, all arriving at the same conclusion. So that not only is there a consensus that there's human caused global warming, there's also a consensus that there's a consensus. Wow. I just find it so, um, there has to be some relationship between that. I, I'm thinking about my area of uh, biology where um, we have very strongly supported areas of science, but those things aren't necessarily called consensus. They are consensus, but there's not a, this is a consensus and here's a measure of the consensus. And so is this because that was specifically an area where the disinformation pushers tried to attack that area of science and that's what they chose? Yeah, I don't, I reckon probably the best person to answer that question would be a science historian like uh, Naomi Oreska. So you just can, call her up. Yeah, if you can score an interview with her. <laughs> but, uh, and the, the thing that immediately comes to mind is a 2002 memo by Frank Luntz, the Republican political strategist, who did um, focus group research on how people think about climate change and then wrote this infamous memo where he basically advised or gave the strategy, the communication strategy to Republicans. If you want to win the debate on climate policy, cast out on the consensus, because if the public get confused about consensus, if they don't think that scientists agree, then they're less likely to support climate policy. You, you win the policy debate by uh, confusing people about consensus. And that strategy was, they took it to heart and they implemented it and, and consensus has been a, a key focus of climate misinformation since. So what can we as scientists slash science communicators do to win this battle? We published the paper in 2017, um, uh, testing what happens with two possible responses uh, to misinformation casting doubt on the consensus. One uh, approach is explain the techniques used to mislead in climate misinformation. And the second approach was communicating the 97% consensus. And we found that both techniques were effective in countering climate misinformation, misinformation casting doubt on the consensus. Uh, so I would say not one or the other. I think we should do both. I think that we, we should be explaining the facts to people, but also explaining how misinformation can cast doubt on the fact. Okay. Just to play devil's advocate here, because it's really frustrating. Your study was 10 years ago, and it was old news to scientists at the time. And we still have, I would hazard to say, most people not being aware that there is still such a strong scientific consensus. It's really hard not to feel defeated. <laughs> Give me good news or some well, optimism. The good news is that um, the public opinion is shifting in the right direction. So for the last 10 years since our paper, and in fact, going back further, we see this steady increase in public perceptions about consensus, about the reality of global warming, humans causing it, the impacts being bad, but importantly also an increase in public support for climate action. So people are more and more wanting to see action to address climate change. So the communication, all the efforts that scientists are doing and educators is working. Public perceptions are shifting. And so I think that um, ultimately we are making headway. Well, I'm going to leave it on a good note, unless you have something else to add. 
Uh, well, a, a similar thing is um, the one last thing I'll say is Peter Doran published the 2009 study that the first one that found 97% consensus. And then um, just a couple of years ago, I teamed up with him to reproduce his 2009 study, but a decade later again. And so we basically ran that same survey. We did the same methodology, surveyed the same earth scientist community. Uh, and he found 97% consensus in 2009. 10 years later, we found 98.7% consensus. So there was already overwhelmingly strong scientific agreement that humans are causing global warming, but it's getting even stronger. But didn't you also publish a, a systematic review of consensus studies? Was that a different study? That, so, so we have our 2013 consensus, 97% consensus. We have our, I think it was 2019 or 2020, uh, 98.7. In the middle of that, in 2016, we did a really a, a survey of all the surveys, like a, um, a synthesis. And there we found that amongst all the studies, uh, and this was actually co-authored by all the authors of those studies. So that for me, that was a real geek out moment because I get to write a paper with Naomi Arezquez and Peter Doran and William Anderegg. And it was, it was, for me, it was like my Avengers moment. And it was like consensus nerds assemble. <laughs> and, um, and we yeah, found, you know. yeah. So we found that, uh, amongst all the consensus studies, there was between 90 to a hundred percent agreement with multiple studies converging on 97%. Do you think that this is an impossible expectation where the consensus is supposed to get to 100% before we accept something? Uh, it's a bit of a grim quote, but science progresses one funeral at a time. So I, I, it will take a while before we get to 100%. Yeah. My graduate professor used to say that death was a cleansing factor. Same difference. Mm. All right. Well, thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Thanks, Melanie. Thanks everybody for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much. That's a for whom the bell tolls kind of moment. <laughs>